Hey everyone, David Easterbrook here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be working on Japanese maples. We're going to be working on this specimen and we'll be transforming it from its pre bonsai shape to a finished bonsai. So buckle up, get ready, we're going to have a fun show. Welcome back. It's been a very long cold winter here and I'm just finishing pruning uh, my Japanese maples. I started last fall and they're starting to wake up now so we have to uh, finish up real fast. I hope your bonsai did well over the winter. If you have any comments or any questions don't hesitate to get in touch with me guys. Today we're working on this Japanese maple. This maple was actually grown from seed that I collected at the Adachi Art Museum from their uh, Japanese uh, garden, their tea garden, uh, about 13 years ago. And I started the seeds. They take two winters, two stratifications before they all uh, germinate. And I got about 33 uh, young maples. Finally, when they were two or three years old, I gave them all to one of my students, Francois, told him him to grow them with the condition that he give me back one. So this is the tree that he gave me back this winter. He did a nice job of wiring it. As you know, it's pretty hard to buy good quality Japanese maples at a nursery, unless it's a bonsai nursery because they're all growing straight as a die. Often they're grafted at the bottom, ugly grafts. It's the species, it's not a variety, uh, but we like using the, the species because they, they grow well, they're strong growers, they're vigorous. The leaves are maybe normal size, but through pinching and defoliation, we can get them down to a very small size. So this is about the ideal age to start working on this tree. As you can see, the trunk's already been wired and the main branches have been wired and lowered. But they're getting too thick. The tree is getting too bushy. So now it's time to um, reduce it to its um, basic shape, wired into place. We can get in, it into a bonsai pot today. So let's get started. Now, when you're... Um, <clears throat> working on these Japanese maples. First of all, we'll choose the front. As you can see, I put a little marker here as to what I think the front is. Why do I think this is a good front? Well, there's a pretty good root splay here. It's pretty nice. I'd like to improve it a bit in the future. And here the curve catches your eye, draws in the eye, and makes your eye follow it right up to the apex of the tree. If we look on this side, uh, the root is not as good. Um, we have an, the impression of having almost opposite branches. This would be the back. Um, not so good because the, the curve of the trunk is sticking out at you. It's, it's not a very pretty curve to have facing you in the front. And finally, this side over here, this side here could have been the front. But here again, we have two branches that are, eventually they'll look as if they're opposite growing branches. And that's not very attractive. I, I prefer to take this as my front here. Now there are two branches at the bottom that were actually left as sacrificial branches. Uh, this one here to um, thicken up the base of the tree and this one here. I think I'm going to still leave one of the two because the trunk is still not um, in my opinion, the trunk is not thick enough. The nabari, the base of the trunk, is not thick enough. So I will leave one. Generally, you'd leave a back one, uh, but we don't have it growing in the back. I'll remove this one here. Right here. And you have to make very deep cuts with them because you want them to heal over, make a nice, smooth a very nice smooth uh, scar tissue so that it heals over completely. So you can see how we've gone into there and we'll put cut paste like this on. Um, usually I wait to the end because I don't like to have my, whoops, it's not coming out. I'll have to 
I'll have to, uh, here we go. Now it'll come out. There we go. Okay, like that. Not too much. So we're going to be following the trunk from the base upwards. Now, this branch here, this is like a sacrificial branch. It's very thick. I think eventually I will take it off. But I want, it, I want to keep on using it for a few more years until the base fattens up. So I will, even though it's not recommended to weaken it a bit, I will remove some of it because it's getting much too strong visually. I just don't like looking at it. So I will remove this very thick portion here and shorten some of these branches here, okay? This will be basically almost my first branch here and it's quite strong. So we do have to reduce some of it here. I'll get back to the finer branching. Right at the end, I'll be pruning back some of the finer branching. Now we get up to here. I don't like this small branch that's in, inside the curve. It's just going to die because it'll be, um, it, you can see how weak it is. Um, it'll lack light under this strong branch here. So I'll remove that. Now, this is sort of a, a back side branch. It sort of serves both. Um, we've got another branch inside there that we don't like. And it's very, very strong, this branch. I don't like the strength of it. It shouldn't be that wide. The foliage pad should be quite narrow. Um, so let me decide which side I want to keep. I, I'm going to remove part of it here because this part is coming toward this branch that I want to keep. Okay, so. Okay. Now, this will be sort of a back branch here. And this very weak one here, this, there's a big empty spot from here to here that I don't like, I really don't like leaving it so empty. So I will use this temporarily to fill in something and push it to one side. So now we get up to this branch. This one is very, very strong. And we've got part of it growing one on top of the other. So this one we have to weaken a bit, shorten it also, because we're getting up, we're halfway to the top now. This is much too long. Okay, so now here we are with this branch here. When we get this close to the top, the branches should be getting thinner, much thinner and weaker. Okay. Now, here's a nice back branch, but here again, we've got, um, it's all spread out, growing in the wrong direction. We'll prune some of it away. And the wiring will have to take care of the rest. Okay, now we're nearing the top here. The top is always difficult because it's a very, um, they're very apically dominant. There's a lot of the branches get uh, quite thick here at the top. And so we have to reduce them in a certain way. Okay, so this also, if we have a choice, we choose a, a branch growing downwards here. Now, now when we get to here, this branch is very, very strong. So this one also has to be reduced here. We're trying to leave branches on the outside of the curves. This will be a front, this will be outside. Now this one is inside the curve, but we don't have any good back branch and this is perfect for a back branch. So we will use it. We are going to use this one. Okay, now 
Now we're getting up to the top. And here we have a very, very strong branch. Why did it get so strong? Well, first of all, it's near the top. And secondly, it's sort of bifurcated. So it got very thick right there. Now, uh, we have to decide, we're only going to keep half of it. Which side do we want? This is the strongest and the ugliest part. So we're going to cut this one off. This one will bring down between these two branches. Our, um, our branches should be placed a little bit spherically, meaning that no one branch should be directly above another one. So now we're going to bring this down. So we, we've got, oh, at least five or six shoots growing out of this end. It's much too strong. So we have to weaken it. You never leave more than two buds at the end of the branch. So we're reducing them. Here we've got our two now. Okay. Okay. And for a top, we can either use this one here, but then we've got no back branch, or we can use this thicker branch here and bring these one of these forward. So I think we're going to use the thicker one, which I usually don't do, but I want this tree to look fuller. Okay, so we've got here, this will be the new top. We still have three branches here. Now we cut off this one, so this will be brought down to fill in that part. So we, we do need this one here. And these are very long for the top. So at the top, we want to shorten them as much as possible. Okay, so there, this is pretty well done now. Um, we'll just shorten the finer branches, and then we can start wiring. So again, we go back down to the, to the bottom, and we're going to start by pruning some of these back, because no branch, the length of any branch, including the first one, should not be longer than, um, than about one-third the, the height of the tree. This one is at least half the height of the tree. So we do have to prune it back a little bit. Okay. Here we have two, one on top of the other. I don't like two. This will be removed here. Uh, I think I'll go back further with this one. It's too wide still, and this branch is coming off at an odd angle. So I'll be using this to fill in that spot and then cut these ones back a bit more. Okay, here. Over here, I've already cut this one back. Now, this branch is much too long. And we've got a very, very long section here where there's no internodes. So it'll never, never butt out there. So we'll cut back to an internode there and here. Okay. This branch here, again, we've got um, four at the end. We only want two. So we'll keep the two lower ones. Cut this one back. These ones, this is very long, but um, there's not much of a bud in there. So we'll leave it and, and wire it to shorten it. We'll, we'll give it a little bit of, um, we'll shorten it by giving it more exaggerated curves. So I think the tree is pruned now. Now it's about time that we get started on the, um, on the wiring. So we're gonna start the, the main branches have already been wired into place. I, this one is still too high. This one should come down a bit here. Uh, this one here. So these ones are okay. So we start by the trunk, but since the trunk has a nice shape already, um, we'll start by the lower branches. Um, we'll do these three, and then we will start to wire the main branches into place from, from about here on up. So right now, we're going to be wiring this branch here. Now, today I'm using 
aluminum wire, not because I'm a wimp. A lot of people say, oh, if you're using aluminum, then it's because you're a wimp, you can't handle copper. No, uh, aluminum is actually a better choice for deciduous trees because it's more gentle on the tree. It actually, um, really, it, it's soft, so it doesn't bruise the bark of the tree as much. And um, it's, it's preferable in my opinion. So I think that um, you should have both. I, I wire all my conifers with copper, um, but I do do the deciduous trees with aluminum wire. Now, maples grow very, very quickly. In Japan, they usually don't wire them um, during the winter, dur during the dormancy period, because what happens is um, in spring when they bud out, there's such a, a boom of sap movement that uh, the branches thicken up very, very quickly. And before you know it, the wire will be leaving marks or the... the the branches will grow into wire in, into the wire and it'll leave very deep scars along the branch. Sometimes um, when you wire the new tips, you're going to have to remove the wire after about two weeks. So generally in Japan, what they do is they wait until the, the big boom of spring growth is over and then they defoliate them between mid-May and mid-June and then they'll... Um, wire them after they're defoliated so that they um the wire won't the most of the sap most of the energy the stored energy is already expended so um <clears throat> it, it won't thicken up too quickly and they can leave the wire on for the rest of the summer so that's a good tip if you can't if you don't have the time to wire them during the during the winter don't it's preferable if you can wait until the spring. Okay, so we'll wire some of these smaller branches here now. And here we go, we're starting. You have two choices when you're wiring a tree. You can do all of the main branches first, and then once all the main branches are done, then you can come back to the, uh, the secondary and tertiary branches, or you can do each branch one by one. Um, it's, it's up to you. Um, Generally, I try to. Generally, I try to wire all the main branches. I don't know why I started this way today, but it's fine. There we go. We'll do a final placement right at the end. Now we'll go to this side over here. When you're doing this um, placement of the branches, um, don't be afraid to use wire that's too thick um, because I mean the tree is not ready for a show anyway uh, it's you're mi merely training the tree it'll be it'll be in training for quite a few more years before it's showable 
Um, so thicker with thicker wire, it gives you better control to place the branches the way you want to place them. So I think it's imperative that you use a wire that's thick enough for your tree. Okay. So now we'll go to this branch here. As you can see, I'm starting underneath the, a lot of the time. That's so that it'll permit me to pull the branch down, not from the, the trunk, but the tip of the, of the tree, the tip of the branches, because um, maples, unlike conifers, um, what brings the branches down as they age is the weight of all the fine branching and the foliage. It sort of lowers the branches and uh, it's only the tips that go down like this so you don't want to use um, you don't want to wire the branches downwards at a very drastic angle I hate wasting wire, so I try to use as much as possible, <clears throat> make the least amount of waste possible. So here we go here. What gives the tree a certain elegance is uh, if you can give this finer branches nice curves, have nice curves all along, that's what really... Um, creates a good quality maple bonsai. So think about that. more little <clears throat> I try to use or you have to use one wire um, for two branches um, wire between them always following the main wire on your trunk or on your main branches uh, in order to anchor your wires so the branches won't flop up and down um, we call it seesawing not you really want to avoid the branch has to be really good and solid Okay, we'll do this here. Usually I keep a little um, a little bit of uh, short pieces of leftover wire to do these small things. I hate wasting good wire on such small, short branches. Okay, so this is the third branch we'll wire down, and then we're going to start wiring these branches um, along the trunk. Again, as you can see, I'm just wiring these branches as I go along, always in pairs, using one wire.
always go with your thicker wire, go to the base of the thickest branch. And then the thinner branches can be wired with the thinner wire. Now we'll anchor this wire on this branch here. Okay. So we've got these three main branches wired downwards. Now we're going to um, start with some of these. These all have to be moved a little bit. So I'm going to be moving them. It's nice to use the least amount of wire possible and never go in the same direction as the other, as, as the scars on the trunk. So I'm going to be going in an opposite direction. Okay, once you've got it anchored, your wire, now we'll be no. You want those spirals to be nice and even, so you have to watch out, get them in the right place. And this branch here I, I'm going to be using it to bring it around the back a bit to fill the back with this small thin branch. It's very weak because it was under another pretty big branch that I partially pruned away, but I want to keep it because it's, for now it's going to be filling an empty space for me. Eventually I can take it off because the foliage pads on the top will get stronger and uh, I won't need it anymore. It'll get so large that... Okay, so now we'll wire this thinner branch here. Going to the thicker one, even it's slightly thicker, not much, but and we're going to stop there. Any branch that's caught in the middle or underneath will remove. get some fine wire here and maybe Now we'll wire the finer branch here.
Okay. So now this one, this one is sticking up. It's above horizontal. And it's, it's not very attractive when it's above horizontal. So this one does have to be brought down slightly like this. So we'll need a, maybe a 3.5 and 3.5 millimeter aluminum wire. We're gonna have to uh, go up to a thicker branch. This one's too thin. So we'll go up to this one here, okay? So, your wire always has to be in contact with the wood, with the, with the branch, but not too tight. As I said, these maples grow very quickly and this wire is going to <coughs> sink in very, very quickly. Now, we'll bring this branch down here. This one also is a very strong branch and it's growing very, very horizontally, which is not a very good thing, so. So now, looking at the front, we'll have to bring this branch down a bit. Okay. There we go. And here. Okay, now we'll, we'll bring this one down and slightly forward. So we need a, maybe a number two wire in here, two millimeter. Now I want to bring this branch up a little bit so I'm actually wiring from underneath the branch. And hmm. yeah, okay. Okay. Now we'll go from this one to this one. Again, these upper branches are slightly above horizontal. We do want to bring them down. So we'll use some 2.5 millimeter wire here.
we're going to have to bring this other part down a bit more also. So, we'll have to double onto this one here again. And then bring this here part down. There we go. Here. Now, I haven't done the fine wiring on these branches. I'm just placing the main ones. Now, as you can see, now that we've lowered some of these upper branches, the, um, the very top ones are all sticking up or sticking out like a sore thumb. So they're all going to have to be wired also. You want to do at least one full turn. So that your wire is well anchored. Now, the rest of these branches will be wired down up here with um, a finer, slightly finer aluminum wire. 1.5 millimeters will do. go there we are now we're not going to bend this but this is going to be our new top and so what we do need I have to pull one off um, to, uh, we're going to go from here to here. Now near the top, you can leave quite a few branches because um, it has to be quite full. So if you have many branches or if they're opposite, it's not a real problem because you want a very full top. So leave as many as you want. Okay, now we have these two. Now, I'm not going to do, do these two together because they'll seesaw. I just want to remove a little end here, a stub. Um, so I will use some finer wire and try to um, anchor to some thicker wire here. To, to a thicker branch. So, And finally, this little one here, this little one we can 
just anchor to the top. And bring it down. There we go. There we go. So, now, all the main branches are wired down. We'll wire some of the finer branches now, starting from the bottom, working our way up. And then, um, then it'll be ready to be repotted. So, yeah. yeah. See if we can use some of this leftover wire here. I'm trying to save on, a bit on aluminum and copper wire. The prices have gone up so much uh, that um, really it's surprising how, how expensive it has become. I just want to straighten out or to tighten a wire here. I should have my pliers, but they're over there on the table. I'll get them in a second. Okay, here we go. That's good enough. Okay. So, now we'll be wiring down some of these smaller branches. 1.5 is 1.5 millimeters is fine. two tips with some finer one millimeter wire. This very thin little branch right over here. Oof. 
I don't think that one's long enough. So we'll get another one. Here we are. Okay. We're getting there, folks. We're almost finished. We're pretty well at the apex of the tree. Yep, here we go. Now you always have to anchor your wire, so um, I can't do two branches in a V-shaped formation because as I say, they'll just flip flop. They'll be like a seesaw. So um, I have to do them um, separately and anchor, anchor the other end of my fine wire. There we go. Okay. We're making it up there. All right, let's see what's left to do. is done oops we've got one over here that we've forgotten so we'll get that done and then i think we'll be finished and it'll be time to get this baby repotted yeah
Okay. This is the branch that I wanted to shorten. It's much too long. Um, so I, I will give it a more severe twist to shorten it with, without, of course, breaking it. I just want to finish this wiring here. Now let's look at it from our presumed front. See whether little bit of wire there. We're good here. We're good there. It's a bit too long. Good here. This is good. This can come toward the front a bit more. There. Here we're good here. This a little bit toward the back. Okay. We're good. I'll get these tools off the table now and we'll be um, ready for repotting. Just um, Japanese maples. I, I always cover all of these, the wounds because they're very susceptible to fungal diseases. Um, so I try, especially pseudonomas, they get in there, they cause these, it's a fungal disease that gets in the wood, uh, turns black uh, along the trunk or along branches, and it's not very, it can kill partially or all of your tree. It's a bac bacterial disease, actually, not a fungal disease. And so uh, you have to treat it with a bactericide. Phyton 27 is a good one. So, yeah. Uh, you have to watch out for that when you're growing maples. Be sure to cover the wounds, every single wound. The wounds act as entry points for disease. So that's why we want to cover them up. So, okay, we'll put the tools on the side and um, I'll... Next step will be to choose a pot 
for this tree and uh, we'll get this baby potted up. Now we're ready to repot the Japanese maple that I just worked on. We have a choice of pots. Uh, generally, Japanese maples look good in very um, pale colored pots, more spring-like. But then again, if you're planning on exhibiting your Japanese maple uh, during, the, during the winter season, it's better a very pale colored pot. A pale gray or an ivory color. Um, if you want to emphasize the beautiful uh, fall colors, the leaves turn uh, orange and red and yellow, then nice soft blues are a nice color. Um, and because this tree is very feminine, a nice feminine shape, you want a nice, generally a, an oval pot is preferable because oval pots uh, bring out the curves in the tree. It's a more feminine look to the tree. It gives it a nice um, sinuous look. Now, I brought out some pots and uh, this one that it's in right now is actually, I find, too large. The tree looks lost in it. Um, it's not very, um, when the pot is too large, it diminishes the uh, importance, the grandeur of the tree. So um, this is not a good choice unless I want the trunk to keep on uh, thickening up. Then, but then again, I could just keep it in a training pot, put it in a one size larger training pot and keep potting it up until it's finished. So next choice is this pale blue Reho pot. And the Reho pot is nice. Uh, first of all, it's not as deep so it doesn't look so overwhelming um, but the problem is it's a bit it's a bit large the pot should be only about two-thirds the height of the tree and this one here is a little more than that if you look at it it's probably oh god it's almost five eighths so it, it's too big i took it out got it ready and then I looked at it and I said, nah, it's not going to work. Okay, so. I brought, brought out this nice little lotus pot, a Chinese pot. A lot of movement to it. It's called a quince shape. Um, it's a nice pot, but looking at it, I find it's too small. It's, uh, I can get the tree into it with no problem, but I just find the tree would look a little cramped. So I went up to my potting shed and looked for ones that were slightly smaller. The only thing I could find were two Nick Lens pots. So I brought out two choices here. This pale, uh, this pale whitish pot. Um, it's a beautiful pot. It's got undertones of orange, and beige is going through it, uh, beautiful texture to it. It's just a lovely pot. Um, <clears throat> and it's about the right size, but because the lip is quite pronounced, I find that the, the tree will actually look a little bit um, lost in it also. So finally, there's one more Nick Lens pot. Same size as the last one, but the shape is different. This one, the walls are Bombay shape. They're curved inwards. And um, <clears throat> I looked at it. It's the same height also, the inside height. But it looks smaller because it's curving inwards. And um, I like the um, harmony of these inward curved sides with the inward curved trunk. I think it's quite attractive and I, I've chosen this pot to put it in because of that. Okay, so we'll go with this pot. I'll just put some anchoring wires into it. And uh, we'll get started on the repotting. Nick did it nice job of putting in anchoring holes. When he first started making pots, he didn't. And then I scolded him. 
I said I had to drill holes and I broke a few of his pots doing that. So he learned his lesson and ever since then he, he made nice anchoring holes for my trees. So here we go. The pot is ready. So we will take this tree out of its out of the training pot. The trees are always wired in, as you can see, so that they won't fall out of the pot. Now this tree has not been repotted for about three or four years, I've been told. So it might, might be a bit difficult to get out. We'll see. We'll pull out the wires first. Whoops. These ones didn't come out. So. Here we go. Okay. So we can see from the base that this tree has not been repotted for quite a while. The, um, the roots are very, very compact, very hard. Um, this, the, there's actually no soil left. It's all roots. Okay. So it's, it's really time that this tree was repotted. Okay. And uh, we'll have to remove some of the, um, <coughs> the roots. Let me try to... get some of these wires out. Starting with the, the screening in the bottom. I'll probably be sawing most of the roots off but I'm just um, trying to, I'll try to get the wires off so that um, my saw won't get caught up in, or break trying to saw through wires, the anchoring wires. Okay, well, we're just going to get a saw out here. Well, it's a good thing I used a, an old saw blade because the wire was still in there. Yes, and it's a good thing that the, um, the person that grew it uh, used a very coarse soil mixture so that even though there's practically no room for any more roots to grow, um, the tree still is quite healthy because the soil mixture, as you can see, was very coarse, okay? Here we go, okay. So, now, we'll start by the top, remove some of the old soil. Should always start at the, the top of the tree, get, because it's the always the top layer that compacts the most because of the 
the watering compacts the top layer. Also, uh, organic fertilizer fills the top layer and, and the soil compacts very quickly. All the, the, the pores, the breathing spaces fill up. So it's very important to um, always start with the top find where your main roots are. There are a few here on the top that are crossing that I will have to um, to take care of, to prune back. Now, Japanese maples are very easy to repot because of their fibrous root system. In fact, often when they're repotted in Japan, um, all the old soil is removed and the roots are washed uh, and new soil is introduced between the roots. Okay, now we're going to do the bottom section. I'll try to move this way and start on the edges and work your way in. Now, the fellow that grew these trees did a very good job of removing the tap root. So there's no tap root, which is great. It'll be easy to repot. As you can see right under the trunk there, there's no big roots. Now there are some spiraling roots um, <clears throat> that just wrapped around in the pot. They're not too difficult to remove though. There's one big root here. We'll get out the root cutters and cut it off. It's nothing like a good pair of Masakuni root cutters to cut off any roots that have gotten too big or thick. So you do have to take care. If there's any big roots coming out from under the trunk, you have to remove them. Leave a <clears throat> Only leave the feeder roots all around the outside edges. Okay, so now it's time to open up the outside edges. These are all the roots that have spiraled around in, those, in the pot. And now we have to open those up. If we don't take care of these spiraling roots, uh, the tree will keep, the roots will keep spiraling and we'll never have a good quality tree. This root is much too strong, it has to be removed. Okay. Let's 
So we do have some roots that have come up out of the ground that have to be removed. And the cuts have to be made facing downwards. And now it's imperative that we um, that we prune back some of the thick roots that were coming out of the edges. So we'll get out our scissors and prune back a lot of those roots that were spiraling around. You always have to leave enough feeder roots to keep the tree alive. But then again, many of those roots, um, many of the branches have been reduced so that uh, we can remove quite a few roots. And you really do have to take care, remove all of those uh, spiraling roots. In fact, I'm even going to do a few pie-shaped wedges in this root ball to get some new air into this root ball. The roots were so tight that the tree wasn't breathing properly. Still got some old wire in here in this tree. So now I'm going to open up some pie shaped wedges so that the tree will be able to breathe. When you make your cuts, make them facing downwards. So I think we've got, there's just one crossing root over here that we're going to take out here. It's, it's passing under this big root here and it's pushing this root up. So I'm, I have to remove that crossing root. There we go. I have made some pie shaped wedges going inwards so that the tree will be able to breathe again. There we go. Okay, so. Now let's see how it fits in the pot. And we'll get it repotted. Just a little bit too much root here in the bottom.
Okay. Now let's see what that tree looks like in the pot. I want to remove a bit more soil right there so it'll tilt forward. Good. Okay, so let's we'll get our bottom layer of soil in there, bonsai soil. A very thin layer, of course. Now, let's see how it sits. Yeah, that's about the right height. So, we'll put in the anchoring wires. Has, has to tilt a little bit more this way. Now I'm just going to throw in a little bit of mycorrhiza and some fertilizer, some uh, slow-release fertilizer, and uh, we'll finish off the repotting. About a um, couple of tablespoons of uh, <coughs> Osmocote, it's um, 15, what is it, 15, 9, 15, 9 12, yes. Um, good for five to six months. Okay. Now you have to get that tree tied in tightly. Make sure it's off center slightly. One. That's good. Oops. Oh. I anchored the wrong wires. I'll undo it and redo it. Here we go.
Okay. So. We're adding some more medium sized soil mixture here. Now we're going to add the fine and work it in between the roots. You have to make sure that there's no empty air pockets. So you have to, empty spaces. So you really have to check, check out your root ball. I made all of these pie shaped wedges to get air into the root ball. So I have to make sure that there, <coughs> that I get new soil into those empty spaces because if the roots are not in contact with a grain of soil, they dry up and die. Here we go, there's some air spaces in here. So, air pockets, so we have to fill those up. Another air space here under this root. Get a bit more soil here. Okay, we've got that one filled. You want to get your Japanese maples repotted before they start budding out. So they should be budding out pretty soon if they haven't already. Depends where you're living. Um, yeah, because if it's once the buds start opening, it's too really too late unless you have a greenhouse. So, yeah, you should be already working on repotting. <clears throat> you should have done your quinces by now, some other fruiting trees, and uh, you should be started on the Japanese maples by now. Okay, so now we're going to. We're going to tap the soil down gently, again, to remove any air spaces. But this is, this is um, Akadama, so we don't want to press down too hard because the Akadama will compact. It, it will turn to powder. Okay, I'll just brush off the excess soil and the repotting will be completed and that way we'll be able to um, it's very important that you water it right away you don't let the roots dry out so what you have to do is you have to get a basin of water and fill it with water um, room temperature water 
And um, if poss if you'd like, you can put a little bit of Super Thrive in there. Um, if you do use Super Thrive to reduce the repotting shock, the stress. Um, and leave it sitting in that room temperature water for about, I'd say, 15 to 20 minutes. All that you have to let the root ball absorb, the new soil absorb the water. It's not enough just to, um, it's not enough just to water them a little bit because it takes a long time to resaturate new bone size soil. Okay, now the soil is pretty high up toward the edges of the pot, but it will sink down uh, when it's watered. So, well, that is, the finished product, um, yes, some of the branches have been displaced during the repotting, so they'll have to be replaced a little bit. But that's that's your future bonsai there for you. Okay, everyone. If you've made it this far to the end of this video, I know it went on a bit long, and there were boring parts while I was wiring, but if you have made it through the end and enjoyed it, well, press the like button, share it with your friends. Try to um, encourage people to get started on bonsai. If you're interested, keep on watching my videos. There'll be more and more as the, um, the potting season is here. There'll be more and more work that I'll be doing on my trees. So hope you enjoyed it, guys. And um, keep on following me on YouTube. Thanks a lot.